Thank you for taking a coffee break with Praise Center. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee Break with Praise Center. Thanks for joining me this morning. Hopefully you've had a great morning so far. And I pray that the rest of your day will be blessed just because you decided to um, join us for Coffee Break. Let's open up with a word of prayer and then we're going to get right into our discussion this morning. Okay. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your kindness, oh God. We thank you for just being an awesome and a great God. God, we ask that you be with us. Open up our hearts and our minds to understand and receive what you have for us to discuss today. God, I ask a special blessing on those that's joining this morning. God, bless them in a special way. Prosper their way, oh God. Give them the desires of their heart, oh God. Just bless them, oh God. God, we thank you for all that you are doing in our lives, and we thank you for the growth that is taking place that you're allowing to work in us. God, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are in our Live Boldly and Love Bravely series we are, that we are currently discussing. And we're, we're discovering ways of becoming fierce-hearted and just becoming fierce-hearted. So my question, we're going to get right into this discussion this morning. So my question to you today is, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Today's topic in our, um, in our discussion, which our book, one of the books we're um, coming from, is Fierce Hearted by Holly Girth. We're also um, taking our discussions directly from the ebook, 21 Ways to Be discovering a becoming a fierce hearted woman okay um so if you get the opportunity make sure you go and you get those books but the topic for today is making friends with fear making friends with fear that's our topic today so i ask what are you afraid of okay so get your journals get your bibles i didn't say that get your coffee get your tea We've been kind of rushing this morning, so I need to slow down a little bit so that I can um, make sure that it's not rushed. This discussion is not rushed today. What are you afraid of? So I want you to write that, uh, that question down in your journal. You think of some things. What are you afraid of? Let's go into this. One of Satan's major weapons is fear. He not only um, uses fear to stop us from fulfilling the call of God or the assignment of God, but Satan uses fear um, to keep us from enjoying life, from living boldly, from loving bravely, or the other way around, <laughs> living bravely and loving boldly. Um, it's a major weapon. And when, I, when we talk about fear today, it's, we're going to discuss a couple of things. And I just want you to go with me here on this, okay, today. Just to bring out fear. This is our next thing. We're making fear, friends with fear. I know that sounds kind of crazy. Um, seems like it goes against everything we believe in or have discussed. But let's go through this. Stick with me here for a second, okay? Making friends with fear basically means facing fear and finding freedom. That's all it is, just facing fear and finding freedom, which is what our this journey has been on, um, helping us to get to a place where we're not so overwhelmed by everything that comes our way, that we don't allow things to, our circumstances and our, our the things that come, that the enemy come to trip us up, that we don't allow them to just stop us and say, forget it, I give up. Fear is one of those things that... Uh, gets us to a point in our minds um, and even in our actions that says, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done. I give up. Everyone experiences or is threatened by fear. For example, and you might say, oh, no, I'm not a fearful person or anything like that. But have you ever, have, has the enemy ever spoken to you? Have you ever had the feeling that you're, you aren't good enough? Um, you're not 
doing enough, you didn't do enough to get the job done the way it should have been done, or you didn't qualify, you aren't strong enough. These things in the back of your mind, these ideas that are that come forth, that, that, that just come through your mind and tell you you're not, you aren't strong enough. You don't have enough. Oh, you don't have enough money to start that business, or you don't have enough uh, workers to do what you need to be get done. You don't have enough. Fear restricts you. It does. Fear puts limits on you. Fear keeps you confined, and it keeps you boxed up. That's what fear is designed to do. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Why does fear do these things? Or why do we allow fear to capture or consume us so much? An idea I kind of came across is we, we, we do this because we don't understand the fear. In understanding the fear, you have to ask, why am I afraid of this? Why am I afraid of this? Coming to understand the fear, why am I afraid of this? For example, in my house, and we're at the house today, in my house, there are, according to the different, se whatever season we're in, insects and pests, you know, big black ants, spiders, ladybugs, uh, moths, bees that get into the house. And it's not like they're getting into the house from the same entrance point because they are they gravitate in different areas. The ladybugs are around the windows in the kitchen, in on the back door, in the middle, and and the ants they somehow get in through the pantry because that's where they come through. You don't see them anywhere else but coming out of the pantry. And in the spiders, they just hibernate in the basement area. And, and you know, and it's really interesting. But when I hear a screech or a scream, oh, an ant! I mean, and these ants—I didn't know I was saying an ant, but these ants are like—they're big, and they—and they're quick, and and they're the the craziest looking things. Or a bee, or a moth, or. You know, I hear these screeches and these screams throughout the house sometimes. And I often yell back, you're bigger than the bug. You're bigger than the ant. You're bigger than the spider. Step on it. Swat it. Kill it. You're bigger than this thing that's causing you torment and fear. Honestly, in all of our problems, <laughs> we're going to be bigger than. But... You are, and you have to understand that you are bigger in your thoughts. You can change that fear around. You can turn it around. You can face it head on and just tell it to go. That's what, what I mean by you're bigger than your circumstances. When it, what I'm saying is we can recognize fear. We can, and call it out. We can expose it. All right? We have that authority. We do. Just as human beings, we can decide whether we are going to let something completely conquer us or we can decide that we're going to overcome it. Yeah, we can. We can choose. Now, it doesn't mean that the issue or the circumstance is going to go away. It's not going to be there. But how you respond to it, how you deal with it, how you go through it, you have control over that. You have control whether it's going, this fear is going to stop you from dreaming, stop you from living, stop you from thriving. Are you going to just stand there and let it conquer you? We've been talking about this. We've been talking about fighting this entire series. And I'm not, you know, advocate of just fighting, go beating up things, people. But no, that's not what we're talking about. But we are talking about taking a stand against what the enemy thinks is going, he, he's going to throw at us to stop us from doing our God assignments. 
we need to understand fear. We need to understand the fear. Is it physical or is it spiritual? It's the other thing we need to understand about the fear that is coming upon us. See, physically or naturally, I said, you are bigger than the spider. You are bigger than the situation or the circumstances because you have the power. Uh huh. You can c control your, you can change how you think about that fear and what it's causing you to do. You can tell yourself, step on it. You can tell yourself to turn it, swat it, get it out of your way. That's what you have to tell fear. And you don't have to be this, uh, I don't know, I, sometimes I think we uh, think we have to be this giant slayer, you know, just this giant of a person with all these abilities and all these, you know, accolades. I don't know. You don't, you can just tell fear in your normal voice, get away. I'm not going to let you conquer me. I'm not going to let you stop me. I'm going to turn these negative thoughts into, you know, I can do all things, you know, through Christ. I can. I'm going to turn these, these hurdles. I'm going to jump over them. They're still going to be there. Sometimes you can't knock fear out of the way, but you sure can move it out of your way. Move it out of your path so that you can move forward. I just want to encourage someone today. Don't let fear stop you. Instead, make it, you know, make it a friend. Don't tell fear. Go on and talk to that fear. Go on and tell that fear, no, today we're not having this. I'm going to conquer. I'm going to do my assignment. I'm going to do my dream. I'm going to do my goal. I'm going to accomplish what I set forth to accomplish. Yes. That's what I'm going to do. You're bigger than the spider. You're bigger than that which comes to attack you. You're bigger than, honestly, you're bigger than the enemy. If God is within you, and we talk about this all the time, if God is within you, yeah, you're bigger. You have greater in you. You have something that is, it's someone that is greater than anything or anyone else in you. So think, remember that and use that. Confide in that. Uh, build up on that. Be bold in that. You are bigger than the spider. <laughs> spiritually. When you think about this spiritually, the fear, the fear that comes to attack us spiritually. And when I say spiritually, things that come and, and, and try to get us, to make us disobedient. When the enemy comes and puts doubt takes your trust off of God, yeah, puts doubt and fear into your God assignment, you have to understand that's spiritual, a spiritual fear. And God has, a, this scripture says, and we, I think we're going to get to that. One of the scriptures I have, he's not giving us the spirit of fear. <laughs> hmm. He's given us sound mind. He's given us the, the will, the, the power of the mind to say, to tell fear, nope, not today. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Okay? We have to understand this spiritually. God is bigger than the spider. God is bigger than anything the enemy throws at you. Hmm. You need God's big foot on this one. Okay, when the spirit of disobedience rises up, you need God's help. Yeah. Let's take a look at why I didn't write these scriptures down. Let's take a look at Psalm. Psalm 56. Let's take a look at Psalm 56. Write down verses 1 through 13. Let me get it here. Psalm 56, verses 1 through 13. I'm going to read this New Living Translation of this, okay? Psalm of David. It says, Oh God, have mercy on me, 
For people are hounding me, my foes attack me all day long. I am constantly hounded by those who slander me, and many are boldly attacking me. But when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. I will praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? That's, that's a good question. It's, what are you afraid of? Go get, Takes you back to, <laughs> you know, in your mind. That, wait a minute. Snapping out of it. That's what understanding, understanding the fear. Wait a minute. What can this do to me? What can mere mortals do to me? Okay. Skip down to verse Skip down to verse 9. It says, My enemies will retreat when I call you for help. This I know. God is on my side. I praise God for what he has promised. Yes, I praise the Lord for what he has promised. I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? <laughs> I will fulfill my vows to the Lord, to you, O oh God, and I will offer a sacrifice of thanks for your help. Uh, for you have rescued me from death, and you have kept my feet from slipping, so now I can walk in your presence, O oh God, in your life-giving light. Interesting. See, I often say David goes in and out. He kind of, he gets there for a minute and he's like, man. And I, honestly, I, I believe, I understand David was a human being just like us. That's why oftentimes I will go to the Psalms because it reminds us, hmm, that, yeah, I go through these same thing. Here I am. Things are coming at me here. People are coming after me, talking about me. You know, saying things, trying to knock down my ministry, trying to um, discredit the ministry, trying to do all these kind of things, uh, slander me. Yeah. But then I have to realize and I have to think that's fear. Anything that comes against you to try to stop you from doing what you know you're supposed to be doing. That God has said, this is your assignment right now. And I need you to do it. But anything that the enemy comes, I don't care what it is. It could be somebody talking about you. It can be your car not starting. Every single time, it's time for you to go out and minister. That that fear that, oh, I'm not going to go because I don't think something's going to happen. Something bad is going to happen. That fear that tends to come to block you, whatever it is, we have to understand. We have to ask the question, wait a minute. The God that I serve is much bigger than all of this. So what will this do? What can they do to me? I'm just having that I want us to talk this through and to think it out. Because sometimes we allow fear to just really wipe us out. When we have we have the power in our tongue, we have the power in our minds to ask, wait a minute, how what is this that actually going to do to me? If I ask God for help, is it really going to wipe me out? Is it going to kill me? If it's a God, if it's God's assignment that needs to be done, then it's going to get done. If you're a willing vessel to be used to get it done. Regardless, it's going to get done. So tell that fear, okay, I got, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do what God has assigned me to do. Whatever come, come what may. Whatever comes my way, I'm going to stand and I'm going to listen to God. I'm going to follow his direction and his leading. And I'm going to do what he says I'm supposed to do. That's facing fear. Understanding that fear has no control over you. When we understand that, we can move forward. Once you understand the fear, go ahead and face it. Go ahead and face it. I chose this particular part of this um, Psalm 56 because it just made us, it made me think about 
there are some times when things come your way and you just wonder why God, why does it, why yet again does it have to come? Sometimes you got to tell yourself, snap out of it. It's not going to take me out. I'm asking God for help. And if I seek God first, everything's going to be all right. Face it. Just like we discussed a few weeks ago about how to fight the enemy we, with our worship and with the word of God and with prayer. So the same goes for fighting fear or facing fear or even making fear your friend. <laughs> worship, the word of God, and prayer. You, you have to equip yourself. Put on a whole armor of God. You have to equip yourself with all of this, <laughs> with the word. Last week we talked about being a worshiper and a warrior. You have to equip yourself with all of this so that when the enemy comes, and he's going to come, the Bible tells us that. And I don't. this is a, kind of a basic lesson today, I guess. But it's just to remind us that we have the power within us to face fear, to overcome it, to conquer it. You don't overcome fear with giving up on your dreams, giving up on your life, giving up, period. You don't overcome. <laughs> but that way, you overcome fear and I say, put these scriptures on it. And I want you to write these scriptures down in your journal. Okay? Um, write these scriptures down in your journal. Let's see if I can. All right. Let's start with, I don't want to type them in. Oh, my goodness. Let's start with Psalm. 23. Let's see if it's on. Psalm 23 and 4. Psalm 23 and 4. I'll go ahead. Psalm 23 and 4. And these are scriptures that you have to uh, it's, uh, use for yourself. Hide them in your heart, I always say. Put, it, put them inside of you so that when you come up against something, that it actually comes out of you. Not only the words come out of you, but the actions come out of you. Okay? Uh, it makes it tougher for fear to actually penetrate you if it has something blocking it. Use the word to do that. It says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. Right? Yea, though I walk, King James Version, through the valley, shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For God, you are with me. Okay? Everything about you protects me. Your rod and your staff, all of, all of that, it protects, comforts me. Write down Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 13. It says, for, for I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. Look, don't be afraid. He's there ready for you, and he's telling you, He's there to help you. Just ask for help. Seek him first in everything that you do. Hmm. I know I keep repeating things over, but it all comes full circle. It all comes, it all comes together. If we put all of these things in action, we won't be so defeated all the time. Yeah. The scripture is the same. The word is the same. It doesn't change like magazines. You know how they print new magazines? And a lot of times, if you really pay attention to it, they are really reprint a lot of the same things uh -huh, in those magazines. But the word, it stays the same. No matter when you pick it up, 
<laughs> no matter if you go buy a new Bible, brand spanking news, pages are still stuck together. The word is still the same. It never changes. So we just need to apply it. Use it. Especially use it as your weapon. All right, write down Deuteronomy. Uh, let's see, Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Deuteronomy 31 and 6. It says, so be strong and courageous. Be strong and of good courage. Don't be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. These are promises of God. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. He won't. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. What? I mean, how much better does that get? There's no reason to fear. Just, it comes, it happens. It's a natural, what there was a neurological thing that a human body, but you can stop it. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. You do not have to actually work through your fear, uh, uh, operate in fear. You don't. Write down 2 Timothy. Uh, chapter 1, verse 7. And something we probably quote all the time, but do we really believe it? Do we really act upon it? Do we really believe it? I said it earlier. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, Okay, timidity, but of power, love, and self-control, or self-discipline, sound mind. Mm -hmm. He's given us but power and of love and of sound mind. So you have it in you. That's what God has given you. You have to use it. Call it forth <laughs> and tell fear to move. All right, write down Psalm um, 27 and 1. I'm sorry, y'all, I'm tapping this in. Psalm 27 and 1. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? See, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When I understand that God is bigger than the spider, than bigger than the problem, bigger than the fear, the thing that comes to attack me. Hey, I have no, I have no reason to fear. I have all the strength I need. I have all the direction I need. Hmm. Hebrews, write down Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. Hebrews 13 and 6. It says, so we can say with confidence, boldly. Yeah, these words, y'all need to write these words throughout your, your journal so that you can, you know, get them embedded in your mind. Confidence, boldly. The Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? What can man do to me? Okay. Don't have any fear. Don't allow the enemy or me, the, 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 the enemy's helper, okay, anyone that to, to decides to allow the enemy to use them. Don't allow them to bring fear your way to stop you from accomplishing that which God has set for, for, for you to accomplish. All right, write down John. John chapter 14, verse 27. John 14 and 27. It says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. 
So don't be troubled and don't be afraid. That's what the scriptures tell us. Yeah, I, you know, God is giving us, he's leaving us a gift. A gift of peace of mind and a peace of heart. <laughs> okay? He doesn't, God doesn't want us to be frazzled. But he wants us to tap into the gift that he's given us. Will you receive it? I often have to ask. Will you receive that gift? We should not be frantic. We should not be, oh, oh no, I'm, I'm just too scared. I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go here. I don't want to go there. You know, someone called me to come and, and minister, and I don't know. I, I, I'm, I, I'm skeptical about it. I, I might not be able to do what they've asked me to do. And, and stop sabotaging yourself. If you seek God, <laughs> Use what he gives you. And I guarantee God is not going to give you fear. He's not going to tell you. God's not going to tell no. No. Although I assigned you to this, I, I might have made a mistake. And um, God makes no mistakes. He'll tell you if no. If you make an assignment in, in yourself and say, no, that's not what I have designed for you. He will tell you no. <laughs> but he won't sabotage what he has put in place. That's not how God works. All right. Write down Joshua. Joshua. Chapter 1, verse 9. Joshua 1 and 9. It says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You have no reason to fear. You have no reason to be afraid. You have no reason to be discouraged. Why? Because God is with us. He's with you. <laughs> everywhere you go, if you take him along with you, and that's the song, take the Lord along with you everywhere you go, it's for real. There's a reason why. Because the enemy is waiting to trip you up. Sorry. Romans chapter 8. Verses 30, um, 38 and 39. Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. New Living Translation says, For I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, Neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. It's too strong. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. He loves us too much. He's, he's done, he's given us so much, even sacrificed his son for us. He loves us too much. And honestly, all he wants is a relationship with us. He wants us to come and ask him for help and give him the opportunity to knock fear out of the way. Uh -huh. he, that's all he wants. Okay. The last one here. First Peter. Uh, chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. It says, So humble yourself under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God. Yeah, remember casting all your cares and worries to God. Give it to him. For he cares about you. He cares for you. All right? Don't let fear tear you down. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let fear say give up. Make you give up. Don't let fear cause you to quit. <laughs> anything turn around and face fear i was gonna say fear pushes you the opposite you know push you back turn around and face fear and tell fear you know not today you gotta move on out of the way i'm gonna accomplish 
what God has given me. If he's giving you a dream, I'm going to accomplish that dream. Is he, if he's giving you uh, a, a business plan, go ahead and conquer that business plan. If God has given you an assignment to go minister, go minister. He's with you. He's for you. He'll give you all that you need. And we have to understand that. Understand the fear. And under, when you understand the fear, when you understand it, <laughs> I'm really bigger than this. I'm really bigger than what's coming my way because I have God on the inside of me. I'm much bigger <laughs> than the fear and I can accomplish it. Listen, we're about to close. I was going to be quick today. If you ever, ever have been afraid of something, anything, and you desire to be free, understand, get it inside of you, your mind, your body, your spirit, get it inside of you <laughs> and be willing to understand that God is bigger and he is willing to fight fear for you. I, I, it's not just a cliche. You have to really believe it. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let fear conquer you. Make fear a friend and move forward. All right, guys, this is it for today. And I hope and I pray that you've been encouraged to just move forward. Don't let anything stop you. Um, that's where we're going and can becoming a fierce hearted woman. You got to know that you got to stand up to some things um, and fight. Not fight, but fight with your worship. Fight with the word of God. Fight with prayer. Fight. Don't allow the enemy to take away anything. Honestly, I don't want anything back that the enemy has taken away. He might have tainted it and stuff. No, don't let him take it away in the first place. He doesn't have that control. Don't, I won't say take it away. Don't give the enemy anything. Don't give the enemy your mind. Don't give the enemy your, your spirit. Don't give the enemy anything. <laughs> Especially, don't give, let the enemy have your joy, your happiness, your life. God bless you. Uh, let me know how you've been enjoying these coffee breaks in this series. Has this series really been a blessing to you? I really want to know. And I, I've been hearing from different ones and I'm encouraged. I need that encouragement sometimes. I really do. Not sometimes, all the time. Um, to keep doing what God has assigned me to do. Uh, it's not that I'm fearful, but I could use some pumping up sometimes <laughs> just to keep going. Uh, so call me, text me, email me, let me know. Um, how these broadcasts have been helping you. Share these coffee breaks with another sister or a brother. You never know what they may be going through, and one of these coffee breaks just might get them through. God bless you, and God keep you. Oh,